So in today's video, we're gonna talk about six more things that I think if you are planning to move to Virginia Beach or the area, these things you need to factor in before you move so you don't make a decision you'll regret. So we'll talk about those coming up. Hey, my name is Sam Sansalone and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area. That includes Virginia Beach and goes through Williamsburg. And I do videos every week about living and moving to the area. You hear talks about if there's flooding, you hear talks about the jet noise for sure. You hear talk about the humidity a lot, but these things are getting into more details that I think will pop up as you're here that kind of get under your skin or get under my skin sometimes. Uh, and I think could factor in to your decision. So number one is the, about the trees. You hear me talk a lot about how much I love the trees in the area. Now, the natural feel and how old this area is adds to the, the, the character and the desirability of the area. Now, Virginia Beach, going through Norfolk, going into Newport News, going into Williamsburg, the tree-lined streets, all the stuff about how much shade you get, how, how uh, much character the, the neighborhoods often get or feel like they have. This is great, and it makes it the houses desirable to me. Now, that being said, the trees also are a problem. There are so many in a lot of neighborhoods that trees falling becomes an issue. Also, leaves dump all through the area. And I mean dump. I'm talking about a lot of these, these uh, neighborhoods have dozens and dozens and dozens, hundreds of trees, and they're not all like just small ones. They're big ones, oak, big leaves. These things will fall down, magnolia trees, and they'll often block the grass. And so you often, number one, you'll have a lot of spots that are hard to grow grass. Number two is when the leaves fall, if you don't rake those leaves up, it's very easy for those leaves to cover the grass. And then you'll have, over time, those leaves block the, the, the sun from getting to those spots on the grass. And all of a sudden you have these bare spots on the ground uh, because the leaves aren't raked up. So you've got to make sure you stay on top of the leaves. Uh, and also pine trees. Pine trees are super annoying. First of all, the sap and then the, the pine needles dump all over the area too. So you have you know uh, yards filled with these pine needles and also again can kill the grass. And so this is annoying. They're also very tall and narrow, so they look like they fall very easily. Now, I don't see them fall all the time, but if you have neighborhoods that have a lot of pine trees, you'll probably get conversations with people talking about how they're, you know, they've had a lot of pine trees fall in their neighborhoods. So this is an issue that leads to often uh, power outages if the neighborhoods that you're looking for, looking to live in um, aren't had don't don't have their uh, power lines in the ground. That's another issue that comes up uh, with uh, trees being in these neighborhoods. So big problems that can come up uh, that don't really show their head until later in the process once you probably moved in so something to keep in mind and it also might affect which neighborhood you pick uh, at least so if you go an older route that might be a drawback uh, for that so that leads me to number two which is this area is very hard to airbnb specifically virginia beach now a lot of other cities in hampton roads are fine and i'm talking specifically in this case about virginia beach here's the problem uh, the city of Virginia Beach is very, very motivated to make sure that Airbnbs are kept at a cap. And so they have pre prevented you from being able to Airbnb uh, a house in, in uh, Virginia Beach unless it has been grandfathered in already or there are specific zones near the beach, the oceanfront, they call them overlays, uh, that if you don't live or don't own a house in those areas, you are not going to be able to Airbnb now at all, period. And so that is as of this past year. So that's a big development. And as the city has changed and d decided how to enforce Airbnb restrictions and, and set restrictions, it's made it very confusing and difficult to feel comf confident in buying a house with the idea of Airbnb being uh, in the city. So that being said, this does not mean you shouldn't move to Virginia Beach, but if you're buying here to also hear Airbnb, please factor in which houses you buy. Uh, and maybe you might not want to move to specifically Virginia Beach City. You might want to pivot to another city in Hampton Roads if this, this is part of your plan. Uh, if not, then so be it. Now, that leads me to number three, which, which is involving road designs. Road designs here are very weird. I'm going to show you on the map what I'm talking about here because the Virginia Beach City, uh, in, including, including Norfolk, including Portsmouth, including uh, Newport News. The roads are very, very random and windy. There are some spots in like Norfolk and Newport News that are more of a grid system, but primarily let's just use Virginia Beach as an example. Look how windy and just random these road these roads are. Uh, and so you, you find yourself driving from spot to spot, lots of stoplights, lots of turns, lots of 
weird intersections and exit ramps. Uh, and so it can be very frustrating driving in the area because of these weird angles and these just very confusing roads. So you hear a lot about the traffic in this area. Now, the traffic is, itself isn't necessarily always bad. You hear, you hear people complain about it, but here's what's going on here. And I've thought about this a lot. What's happening here is a lot of times the drivers in Hampton Roads can be pretty erratic and which leads to a lot of accidents. And part of that reasoning is also because of the roads being confusing and so and, and also difficult to drive in sometimes. So you have a lot of difficult uh, conditions mixed in with the elements and mixed in with drivers that are pretty aggressive you find yourself with more random accidents. And those accidents usually the one other things creating the most traffic now. I found a survey that ranked Virginia Beach as the third worst driving city. Now they've also factored in things like uh, DUI uh, amounts in the cities, as well as drivers, as well as speeding tickets, as well as accidents. So these all factored into the rankings that this uh, uh, website, Quote Wizard, uh, gave. The intersections can be annoying. There is an intersection in the area that is unlike any almost I think in the entire uh, country uh, in the corner of Indian River Road and Kempsville Road, which you have to drive through the intersection and make a U-turn in order to turn uh, around on the sides of the intersection as opposed to going up to the stoplight and making a left. You can't do that. That leads me to number four, which is, this is something I just come to realize and accept, which is we will never get a four major sports professional major league team, period. I don't think it's happening. Uh, we've tried baseball multiple times. We've tried basketball. We've talked about hockey. Uh, we have not ever tried football, but there's no reason why. Why is it so hard for the Virginia Beach area to get a professional sports team like this? The reason I, I think are multiple. One is that this is a large, if you look at the, the population of the Hampton Roads area, you notice it's well over a million people, which makes you think we should be getting more attraction for sports teams. The problem is that the land size, if you look at the land size of Hampton Roads, going from Virginia Beach all the way through Newport News and Williamsburg, it's massive. It almost takes up, you know, like 30, 40% of the coastline of Virginia Beach, or of Virginia. And so the fact that there's so much land leads to the fact that there are so many people, but scattered all across the area, which means less fan base. It's harder to get uh, to and from a, a metropolis. Uh, you know, downtown Norfolk is the best, the largest downtown in the area, but you know, driving from you know, Williamsburg or Newport News to Norfolk is not easy, much less driving in and out when you have tens of thousands of people going to the same event. And so that kind of condenses the amount of people that can go see an event or, or see a basketball game or a baseball game, uh, much less dozens of them over the course of a season. So this makes it hard. Not to mention, there is so much transient lifestyle here in uh, Hampton Roads in Virginia Beach because of the military. There are so many bases, military bases here because of that, you have people coming in and coming out. So you have less people that can come and be part of a sports fandom, if you will. You only really need someone that has a lot of money that's willing to take a big risk to put you know, money down for a stadium and to, to really help push uh, an effort to get a team here. Otherwise, it is going to continuously be a conversation, but will always, to me, uh, will always fall short of some of these other team, other uh, cities that are either emerging or have always deserved a team and just haven't gotten one yet. I just think there are enough things to keep us uh, from getting that team. Now, number five is interesting. I think this gets overlooked a lot, which is involving termites and moisture. It's very important to know that termites are very, very common in Hampton Roads. Uh, the moisture content in Hampton Roads and Virginia Beach is extremely high. And so because of that, if you don't do anything to your house, when you buy your house to live in it, the crawl space specifically, if you don't do anything like have an annual inspection from a termite company uh, and even put moisture barriers in, in the crawl space like plastic, it is easy for that, that wood in the crawl space to, uh, to absorb water and over time, not just attract termites, but then also have fungus damage and get into the wood and cause more damage to the wood. Uh, and so that leads to structural issues, at least to thousands and thousands of dollars of damage uh, that can easily be done to houses, not just in crawl spaces, but in walls. Just make sure when you do move to the area, make sure that you get a, a contract with a termite company uh, and get, in, get a good inspector that you trust that can inspect the house. So it's more of a prevention thing once you get here, but just don't don't come uh, to the area without realizing that this, this is part of the home buying and home ownership process uh, in Virginia Beach. And another one that I don't think people realize until they get through a season in the wintertime here is that wintertime can be very boring. 
Number one, if you love the beach, it's going to be too cold to go to the beach because the first of all, the water is already fr it's cold, but also it's going to be 30, 40, 50 degrees uh, out for you know, a couple of months. And so that will not just drop, drop the water, but you're not going to want to go to the beach, you know, walk on the boardwalk very much either. So that takes that out. Being outside a lot is just it's not as fun because it's 40, 45 degrees and it's cold right now in the wintertime. You can go see the Norfolk Admirals, the hockey team. That's one thing you can go to a show in Norfolk. There are things that you can do museums, for example, driving four or five hours to go skiing, for example, uh, or you can drive three or four hours to go to Washington, D.C. or a couple hours to Richmond. So if you have any more questions about relocating or moving and living in Virginia Beach through Williamsburg, let me know. This is what I do. I help people relocate here all the time. I've got my contact information in the description. You can reach out at any point and I'll do whatever I can to help you relocate to the area. And I will see you on the next video.